guys, my name's Katie and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about mini beasts. Now, mini beasts are super cool. They come in all different shapes and sizes. Some of them are really, really long. Some of them are really short. Some of them have got lots of legs and some of them have no legs at all. But they've all got one thing in common. They are all missing something from their bodies that we have. Now, I'll give you a bit of a clue. It's a very big bone. Have a think, see if you can guess what it is. It's a bone that goes from your neck down to your bum. Does anybody know what it's called? It's your backbone or your spine. So see if you can have a feel of your backbone. Mine's a little bit knobbly wobbly. It goes all the way down. Check nobody's turned into a ladybird. I bet one or two of you might have. And then I'm going to see if you can guess any of these minis I've got pictures of. So I'm going to give you some clues and see if you can have a think. And if you think you know what it is, you might want to shout out or you might want to put your hand up too so we know who to pick. So this mini beast comes in a few different lengths. Sometimes it can be really, really short or sometimes it can be really, really long. But it has hundreds and hundreds of hairs all over its body all over its body, loads and loads of them, but you can't see them, they are invisible. And it helps it to move underground. Anybody had a think of what it might be? It is, of course, our wiggly, wiggly worm. They have hundreds of hairs over there that help them pull themselves underground, which I guess you might not have known because you can't even see them with our eyes. Now our next one, oh, let me have a peek, see what it is, oh, I know. So this next one, he is a bit slimy. He could climb up a wall if he wanted to. And he's very lucky because he gets to carry his house around on his back. Does anybody know who he might be? He is, of course, a snail. Now, this snail, he's got a brown curly whirly shell, but sometimes they can be yellow and stripy as well. And that goo that they leave behind, that helps them sometimes find their way back to their house because they leave their own special smell in that goo to help them figure out their way back. Now, we'll do one last one. Let me find my favourite one. Oh, I've got it. This one, it comes in a few different colours, but the one on my picture is red and it's got black spots and it has six legs and hidden underneath those red and black spots, it's got some wings too, so it can fly. Can anybody guess what it is? It is, it's a ladybird. Has anybody ever held a ladybird before in your hand? And when that ladybird's flown away, you might have spotted a little bit of goo in your hand. Now that's not ladybird poo or wee, lots of people think it is, but actually what it is, when a ladybird gets really scared, it makes some smelly goo come out of its legs and its arms. And it's meant to try and scare you away, but because we're so big, it doesn't really work on us, but it does work on other bugs that it might spot out there too. So in a bit, we're going to see if we can find any bugs out and about where you are. And I'm going to see if I can find any out and about here too. And we'll maybe catch a ladybird. You never know. We might find a slug. I bet we might find an ant or two as well. Let's see. So if you want to go on your very own mini beast hunt, it's super simple. All you need is some sort of container. I've got my special bug pot, which comes with a magnifying glass in the lid. But if you don't have a bug pot, don't worry. All you need is a yogurt pot or even an egg box would do. And you need a paintbrush. Now it might seem a little bit weird. Why do you need a paintbrush? We're not going painting. But instead of picking up that wiggly worm with your fingers and squeezing him too tight or picking up a spider and by mistake pulling his leg off, instead, all you need to do is brush them in very lightly and then you won't hurt them at all. And then you can have a bit of a closer look. Even if you wanted to collect them all together rather than collecting them in your small pot, if you've got a tray or a bigger container, you can pour them in there so they've got space to run around or huddle up all together if they want to be friends instead. You might spot a slimy slug hiding under a stone. 
you might spot a wiggly worm just poking up out the ground. Or if you have a look on the leaves on the trees, you might find a ladybird or you might find a beetle or two. I found lots of woodlice today, but there's loads and loads of mini beasts out there for you to find. So have a go. Right then, so I'm gonna see if there's any mini beasts hiding under this log. It looks like a pretty good call. Mm, oh, there's some very small things hiding. There he is. See if we can catch him. I can put my lid on to keep him nice and safe. And I can look at him really close up and see if I can count his 14 legs. Oh, I don't know if I can. Oh, and then I can empty him out into here. get him on the right way around and see if we can find him any new friends. Right then, we're gonna have a look under what I think was an old fence post, but you could look under rocks as well. You could even look at the leaves and there's plenty of those around here. See what we can find. I've got my fingers crossed for a slug. Let's see. Oh, lots more wood mouse. Mm, nothing different. There's clearly been quite a lot of things living under here. No, just another, it must be a woodlouse day. Just another woodlouse. Let's get him. Let's go live with his new friends. Let's see, is there anything under here? Oh, broke a bit, but there's another woodlouse. Come on, there he is. Pop him in and off he goes to go meet his new friend. Ah, oh, and this isn't a mini beast, but there is a little toad. I won't pick him up because his skin's a little bit different to ours. And we'll make sure we cover him back over with his little log so he can stay nice and cosy. Now I'm going to show you how to make a bug house that you can pop outside and hopefully you'll get some new bug customers. All you need is a toilet roll, a piece of string and some sticks. Now, if you want to make your bug house super fancy, you can get some felt tips or some colouring pencils and give it a bit of a colour and make a super fancy pattern around the outside. But I think I'm going to be a bit boring today. I'm going for very natural work. Next, you need to get your string and feed it right through the middle. You might need an adult's help, or maybe you're super good and you can do it on your own. Tie a bit of a knot at the top of your string so your ends are together so you can hang it up when we're finished. And then lastly, you need to get your sticks and you need to push them through. Now this bit gets a bit tricky. It's super easy if you put it on the floor or put it on the table you're working at, then they won't all just fall out. I'm gonna have the fun job of shoving them in mid air. Let's see if we can do it. Put in as many sticks as you can fit. You could also put some leaves in here or maybe if you find a bit of moss that's come off a tree trunk, you could pop that in too, because basically bugs like to live anywhere that's nice and cosy and small where they can get nice and warm. Some slugs like it a bit damper, but lots of visitors will come and live in here too. Hopefully I've collected up enough sticks, but if not, there's plenty on the floor as well. And when I've finished, I can go hang that somewhere for my bugs to come climb down the rope and climb inside and have a bit of a snooze. <laughs>